All right, so um, covering putting in your own music into the project instead of the one that uh, are built in here, uh, you can import your own music. So in my case, I had I had this example music. What I've got for you is the Motorola. So what you can do is, if you no longer want that track, instead I want to replace it with something, I'm just going to delete it. Uh, I want to use one of these other tracks I'm going to show you. So you can select it and press delete on the keyboard. Okay, so the idea is I need to, I need to import some music into this project. We'll cover this more when we get into YouTube next time. But when we get into YouTube, YouTube has a, uh, has a whole library of music that you can download for free. Now, YouTube really is like two sides of the same coin in that there is a side for consumers and a side for creators. When you go to YouTube.com, you're there as a consumer. I want to watch this video. I'm going to consume this video. I'm going to watch this one. Okay, you're a consumer. Well, the creator is... Um, we will do this next time, but we're going to create an account, and then we'll have the option then to go into the Creator Studio. So the Creator Studio, we will see next time. This is where I upload a video. This is where I optimize my video for usage. I mean, for view viewership. This is where I check my followers and answer emails or whatever. But in the Creator Studio, I also have a section here for Create. And under Create, We'll also see we have stats and all of that later. But we have create, and here then is thousands of free songs in a variety of lengths and styles and and all of that. So just randomly playing a music here or here. Okay, well. I can organize by genre, mood, instrument, duration. Before I go off and find my perfect sound, I would say, however, change the attribution to attribution not required. All of these sounds are free for you to use. But these that say attribution required, which will also have a little icon of a little person right there, you have to mention in your video you used that sound. And I know that for myself, I'm too busy creating the projects, uploading it, optimizing it, working on clients. I always forget to give attribution because I add the music early on to the project and I forget to credit it. That could uh, be problematic. So in any of these sounds that you, that you look for, I would recommend switch right away to attribution not required. And you have to give, then you don't have to give any credit at all where you got the sound, who made the sound. You just use it for any purpose, commercial or non-commercial. So we'll, I'll cover that again when we create an account next time, but I want to write it in the notes. You can go to Creator Studio after creating an account, and then create screen at left to find this music. Advice, change the filter to attribution not required. to avoid any possible issues in using their music. Besides that, there's a lot of great music styles, genres, lengths, and free for you to use for anything. Once I've gone to attribution not require, then I can say, OK, uh, I want mood. I want a happy style of music. So then it filters itself. I also need it to be a certain length. Um, my video is, is just about a minute, so give me something less than a minute. In my case, there's only one result right here. Okay, well, sometimes the cutoff, the cutoff time is, is a little more strict than you think. So if I go up from one minute to 1.30, uh, then I get many more results. What's that? Yes, you can. I'll show in a moment here that once we add it, we can edit it for the length, fade it out, fade it in, and I can have multiple sounds. This is one possible reason why we can kind of borrow the voice track 
because we can put one sound here and another sound here. It doesn't have to literally be voice. Or you can also put another audio up here on a different one. You've got video 3, audio 3. You can borrow that audio for another sound. So it's not limited to one sound. You can put it in all of these different tracks. Now, I already downloaded a sound for us to use, but again, you can go through this. Maybe it's a little loud, but uh, you can go through this. And it's mostly instrumental. And that's usually what you need. You don't need the audio of the singer fighting with what you're saying in the video. And um, there are some that have audio or uh, vocals, but it's mostly instrumentals. And then so once I found my perfect sound, I can click the download button and then we'll use it in a project. I already found one. I already downloaded it. I put it in the network folder. So let's go get the sound that I already prepared for us. You, you can minimize everything and we'll go back to the network folder, the, 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 the Z drive. Let's just minimize everything, go back to computer. We'll go to classroom data drive Z. Inside of Campo Social 3, I put a brand new sound there, Funhouse. Move this file into the folder where your project is at, probably on the desktop. So step one, copy that to your desktop, copy it to your computer. Step two, in Premiere, add media, add a file. So my My, my folder, uh, that's where I, I put Funhouse. I took it out of the network folder, put it into my project folder. There's funhouse.mp3. This can take just about any kind. Premiere can take about just about any kind of sound. And mp3 is the common one for music. So I can select that one and open it. Uh, it's doing the image importer again. Um, if you get the image importer, just cancel that. This, the, the other way that's completely simple is just drop the file into the into the into the window. Um, I guess a faster way. I usually do it this way. I don't know why I'm going that way. Usually the way I do it this way. I just from here just drop it in like that. So whatever files you see from a folder, just drop it into the the item there. Oh, it still says this. I guess they must have their settings different on this system. So okay. I'm trying to import a file from a DVD, which I'm not. Please use video importer. Okay, fine. Video importer. The video importer will pop up and ask you what to import. You just want to select the one file. So you want to do uncheck all. And somewhere around here should be the sound. Funhouse. So I think they have different settings here. Uh, you're supposed to be able to just drop it in. <clears throat> but anyway, make sure you uncheck all and only check Funhouse. If this pops up, if it automatically put it here, great, you're done. But if it did this pop up like me, you have to unselect everything and only select Funhouse. Get media. In my case also, it got confused and it put it at the beginning of my project. So I'm going to delete and close gap. Because I wanted this to be in the music track. So drag it from the top into music track. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is the show where I review something cool. Too loud. So here's the part. Too sad? It's a little seductive. I thought it sounded sad. So I'm going to drink, bring that down so that it sounds better. Cool. Every Tuesday. Huh. This week what I've got for you is the Motorola G5. The case is an aluminum magnesium 
uh, metal, which really resists scratches and fingerprints. Excuse me, where are you increasing the volume on the slider there to the right that you just did? Rather than... This one here? Yeah. How are you doing that? That's the volume of the computer. Oh, that's just... Yeah, and on the keyboard on the top, we've got volume up and down. Okay, so, so it's not it affecting... It wasn't on the clip. No, on the clip, you do have to drag it right here okay. how you want it. So there's not a, a thing where you can plug in a number or... There is. Let me show you that. For, let me answer your question one moment. But the other place to plug in a number is once you've got the, the clip selected, you can go over to Adjust, and here's volume okay. where you can put an exact value. Does it default at 6? It defaults at zero. Zero decibels is the zero normal volume. Negative numbers are then quieter, and then positive numbers above zero are louder. Yes? I want to fade in music from zero at zero on the timeline over the course of one second. There's an even easier way. It's built in. Right click your sound, and you have a whole fade category, and this will work on video or audio, right click, fade in audio. So it will automatically in one second fade in, you can also do a fade out, do both at once. You can do that with your videos as well. So my video, in my case, suddenly appears, I can right click my video, fade, and I have more options, but fade in only the video, only the audio of the, of the video, or both. Fade them out, fade them in and out. So probably I would want fade in audio and video of my video, and then in one second, a nice clean fade in. I don't have to do any splits and all of that. I just do the right click, and there's already a fade. So I'm going to find a good sound volume for my track here. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. Motorola G5. The case... Now this can get very advanced because what could happen is you can lower and raise the volume uh, whenever you want. So as I, as I kind of see it here, there's like a low part for a long time and then it builds up. <laughs> It's a little higher. So what I could do is I could say starting from here, you know, it's going to be at you know negative eight, but then over here it's going to fade down for the rest of the video down to negative seven, seventeen. So you see it's at a certain volume and then it comes down to a lower volume, and then maybe there's a part where I am silent and I want to show the visuals, but I want the music to rise up. So then I do the same thing, like from here. It's going to start at a certain point. See how it puts a little dot here. Something changed at that point. I go over With here. That. I increase it back to 1. And see, from here to there, it goes back. So I have the volume coming up and down. You is the Motorola G5. The case metal, which really resists scratches. Too loud. But uh, I can go up and down on the volume. I just click on the spot, make the adjustment change. I can also do that for fading in and fading out the visuals. I put the playhead where I want. I go to make an adjustment. It'll make a little dot. And then from there, you, go, you can adjust it how you want. You can also do it manually here. I know that I like to put in exact values to be consistent. But once you've got these little dots, you can just grab them and move them manually where you want them to be, and it'll tell you that's at 4.3. I know I needed 4.2, so I'm never going to get to 4.2. See that? So I would adjust it by the values. And you can also go to the spot and select to put in right here. Put in a little keyframe so that it creates a spot from here to here. And then I have, an, I have a spot to adjust. So then maybe fade out the sound all the way. It's got a dual camera, as you can see here. Two lenses. In my case, my sound goes all the way to 1 minute 56 seconds. My video only goes up to 
1 minute 7 seconds. So here's an example where I would just drag that to the end and then right click fade out. That one is a Logitech uh, C910. It's a web camera that you can plug into any computer. It's a pretty good quality. It's an HD format, but for some reason, on, on, uh, in my case right now, the audio got unsynchronized, which can be fixed, but overall it works well. It's been Victor for the Tech Review Tuesday. See you next time. So maybe I want here as I finish talking, the music will f will fade up a little louder. So I just put in some of these points here. Maybe it goes back to normal. See you next time. Not too high. See you next time. What's that? Yes, this is the thing about video editing that oftentimes you're going to spend at least double the time that you spent recording the video. If I took half an hour to record everything that I needed, you're going to probably spend at least half an hour, probably at least one hour, to do all of this. Putting the video into the project, removing the mistakes, adding the text, adding the sound, finding the sound exactly perfect, putting in my fade in, fade out. So it's very common to spend at least double the time. Even Hollywood movies do this. You know, they record all of their footage in, in one month. And then it takes, you know, the Star Wars movies, they, they record all of their Star Wars footage in like three months, and then they take like three years, traditionally, to edit it all and put the special effects and the acting and, and all of that, and then the movie comes out. So that's um, very common. The editing process can be the same or double the time that it takes just to record your, your footage. So there's still plenty more that can be done on this project, of course, but as we get to the end of the day for the moment, the, one of the last things that we would do is, well, we need to export. We need to combine all of these separate things. The music is still its own track, and video has been split into several clips, and then I've got the cool picture-in-picture -picture effect that I did, and then I've got my text and all of that. All of, all of that needs to be combined. So that happens right over here. On the top right corner, it says Export and Share. If you click on that, we have Quick Export. Export this to put it onto a DVD. Prepare it uh, to be put online. Only the audio. OK, here we go. Online. Prepare it for YouTube. Prepare it for Facebook, for Vimeo. Uh, export only the audio. Export only pictures or devices. Prepare it for a computer, a television, mobile, custom. So what do you think we're going to do? YouTube. So online, YouTube, it automatically picks quality here based on the original video. If your original video is a small, low quality, standard definition video, it will, it will not improve the quality and up-convert it to HD quality. Uh, this is the classic um, computer um, mantra of garbage in, garbage out. If you put uh, low-quality graphics, low-quality music, low-quality video into the computer, that's what you'll get out of it. It won't ma miraculously fix it. So this video that I originally shot was in HD quality. Almost all cameras nowadays are in HD. You, don't, you really don't have to worry about it. But it was originally in an HD quality format. Therefore, I'm going to re-export it as HD quality. You could change it here from standard quality to high quality. And it says here, you're about to create a 42 megabyte sized file. It originally, it was 50 megabytes because it was also longer. I've cut out stuff. Or I can increase it to high quality, but then it gets bigger. That's if you want to see every single eyelash in the, in the visuals, which you probably don't. 
So the online YouTube settings are good, and then we've got begin share, which will have you connect over to your YouTube account to upload. Well, we're not there yet. If we had a YouTube account, this would up this would create the project and upload it. That's a great time saver. We're not there to upload yet. So this is another way to do it. Devices. HD quality. This is going to save the file somewhere in your flash drive or desktop or wherever you tell it so that then later you can upload it to YouTube or Vimeo or Instagram or whatever. So a, a good time saver is one of these online, but you have to have an account and logged in. What we will do right now for the moment is devices and HD. Uh, browse to save it onto your flash drive or desktop. You can change the name of the video if you want or not. And then click save. But the desktop's going to go away after we the Yes. So, no point in really saving. Uh, unless you want to keep a copy of it for next time. Yep, we can use this one. Next time when we when we actually use YouTube, we can just use my file. Uh, I'll be saving my files, and then you can use that one. Okay. So we don't need to save it. Not really, but for the full experience, uh, I will save it. So now, because I also wanted to show this, once I say, okay, let's save it, I'll click save. And then this is the part now where we have rendering media, where it will think about it, and then in my case, it's going to take another 10 minutes or so to combine all of this stuff. Uh, actually three minutes good so depending on the complexity of your video how many tracks how much music how much text and also the the power of your own computer this might take a while or not very long when I make some of these videos that are like 15 minutes long um, I start the render and, uh, the exporting and then I go have lunch and then come back because sometimes it takes a while here it's barely a minute long, it's not too many tracks, it's going to get done in the first 14 minutes and now it's down to about a minute. So these computers are, uh, are pretty alright processor-wise, um, hardware-wise, but then when you do this on your own computer and you're trying to do this on a you know, seven-year-old computer, this is when you go, don't, don't go get lunch, go to the buffet because it's going to take a little while. Uh, I remember back in the 90s, doing this in the beginning, uh, I would literally have to leave it running overnight mm -hmm. to have it all process. And um, computers are so much faster now to do this. So even here, when you're trying to just talk and waste time, it's still taking a moment, but it's not as bad as, as the old days. And eventually when this all, all this processes, you will have a brand new file with all the tracks combined, your original file is intact, and I'll show that in a moment. Victor, yes. If you want to post something both on Facebook and YouTube, do you have to save it in the two different ways, or do you do this and then you I would do this way. Save it to devices so that it saves the file somewhere, and then just manually log into YouTube and then log into Facebook and upload it that way. So it's not saving two different versions. Like the forehead said, you know, we're maximizing it for YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Was it doing anything to the actual file to make it better? Oh, on that, on that, yes, it will create different versions of it. Because we saw here when we go to online, for YouTube, we have this size. And when we go to Facebook, it's that size. So it does create different versions. I would prefer the do device because then that gets the best version. What are the other formats that you use them? You usually don't need any other format except HD. If you I record it, MP4. Oh, right here. Yeah. yeah, here's another answer. Don't don't even change that. MP4 is really the best answer. Um, MOV and MPEG are kind of classic formats that sometimes you might need them for some reason, and I'm not familiar at all with M2T, so I don't know. But MP4 really is the universal one nowadays. Because it's two extra steps in terms of when you go to online, you have to say, let's select YouTube, let's 
then start the share. It's still going to do that rendering thing, which took one minute. Then I have to come back and go to Facebook, select that, and wait another minute for it to create two different files for two different networks. If you go to Devices, it creates one file that will work fine on both networks. Yeah, but I really think the downside is all of the waiting with you know a five minute long video have to create it twice and then go to upload to each place. Can you, can you play that file on your computer? Yes, I'm about to show it right here. So after I've exported it, so here's my original unedited video. It's still the original size there. And then here's my newly edited one. So I can just double click it and play it on my computer before even uploading it. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is a show where I review something cool every Tuesday. This week what I've got for you is the Motorola G5. The case is an aluminum magnesium uh, metal which really resists scratches and fingerprints. It's got a dual camera as you can see here, two lenses to capture three-dimensional photos. Uh, an amazing new bit of technology which uh, repels oil and gives you the best saturation in your images. This costs about $250 and is available on AT&T, Verizon, and more. So this week I reviewed the Motorola G5 from AT&T. This has been Victor for the Tech Review Tuesday. See you next time. I could have done a fade out there, or I could have also removed uh, what I was, uh, that final part there. But uh, so, obviously there's still much more that can be done, but a lot of it is also on practice. Uh, teaching the software is relatively straightforward. You click this button to do that, and you click this to do that. But to get good or to create content that you think works, or this is the show where I review or something proud cool. Of, that takes every the time Tuesday. and effort. And this week, what I've got for you is the we Motorola had, it's just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. The tip of the, the tip of the iceberg. Is an aluminum uh, next magnesium, week, when we come back, we're going to uh, create a YouTube account. Which really we're going to see how it's similar and, and different to the other networks. It's got a dual uh, set ourselves up so that we can start to get followers, two and lenses likes and to all capture that. three dimensional and then photos. We can use my video if you'd like, uh, or if you created your, your own video, you can which, use yours. Uh, or if you want to bring a video, gives you the best maybe you want to use my video to promote your YouTube. It can be this deleted, costs of course. about two hundred and fifty dollars. You want to bring your own video next time. Uh, the only catch there is Verizon. You bring your own video. Let's say you record your own video. You're going to also need to bring your cable to plug into the computer. So this week I reviewed the Motorola G5 from AT&T. Uh, this has been Victor. Or just use the video that Tech I'm Review Tuesday. Creating see you next time. And then we'll create our account. We'll see how YouTube works. We'll see how to optimize for YouTube and get videos and subscribers and. And then, of course, we'll talk about also the big why would I use YouTube for my business. That'll be next time. General questions on what we talked about today? Okay, so hopefully if you liked uh, Premier Elements, I would recommend investing in it. It's very powerful, uh, relatively easy to use compared to the big boys, but um, I recommend it. <laughs>